Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode, and I hope you're all having a great time. SpaceX's recent activities have showcased significant advancements in their space exploration technology, particularly with Ship 28 and Booster 10. The team at SpaceX initiated a critical phase with the attempted static fire of Ship 28, a key test for assessing the spacecraft's Raptor engines. This procedure was vital for ensuring the spacecraft's performance and reliability. Subsequently, Ship 28 successfully achieved a milestone by completing a full-duration static fire using all six of its Raptor engines, marking a significant achievement in its development. The successful completion of Ship 28's static fire test marked a transition in focus to B-10. The Raptor install platform, RIP, returned to the launch complex, LC. A move that seemed slightly premature as access to the cone gate was still restricted to security personnel. Notably, a few damaged tiles were observed on Starship 28 after its static fire, indicating the intensity and stress of such tests. Concurrently, considerable progress was made on the ground operations. The booster stand was strategically moved into a staging position adjacent to D2, a crucial step in the preparation process. In a detailed operation, the booster Quick Disconnect, or BQD, was attached to Booster 10, B10, after the crew spent considerable time working in the area. This attachment is essential for the booster's functionality and integration with the spacecraft. In recent developments, SpaceX resumed seating procedures for B10, which had been temporarily halted due to scaffolding interference. B-10 was finally positioned inside the Orbital Launch Mount, OLM, a significant step towards its readiness. The process included the release of stabilization pins and the operation of the chopsticks, large mechanical arms used for maneuvering the booster, which then opened and ascended towards the top of the tower. Additionally, SpaceX introduced a new nose cone welding station in the expansion of their Star Factory, signifying ongoing enhancements in their manufacturing capabilities. The new station was associated with a white triangular truss structure previously seen at Sanchez, indicating SpaceX's continuous infrastructure development. Furthermore, SpaceX employed a MOVAC to clear puddles in the roadside parking area near D2, showcasing their attention to operational efficiency and safety. Down at the Orbital Tank Farm, or OTF, there were activities at Ground Support Equipment 7, GSE-7, originally built for methane, CH4, storage, but repurposed as a water tank. The paint was ground off the welds around the lifting lug, likely for inspection before potentially scrapping the equipment. On the other hand, one of their recent endeavors involves Ship 26, a spacecraft that's been the center of attention due to some unusual modifications. This article seems to simplify and explain the complexities surrounding SpaceX's activities, particularly focusing on Ship 26. On December 26th, significant developments were observed at the Rocket Garden, where Ship 26 is located. Crews, who had been minimally interacting with the vehicle since it returned from a single-engine static fire test, began a series of intriguing modifications. The most notable change was the addition of large steel pieces to the stack weld, which connects the payload bay and the forward dome section of the ship. Throughout the day, additional plates were welded near this line, apparently to reinforce it. This modification was peculiar as it hadn't been seen on other SpaceX ships. The reinforcement on Ship 26 becomes more intriguing when considering a recent structural test on S24.2 test article at Massey's. The S24.2, designed to test the structural integrity of the payload bay, showed some weaknesses during the test. A significant buckle developed on a weld, similar to the one reinforced on Ship 26, along with some deformation on the PES door. These findings led to a theory that the welds might need reinforcement. One of SpaceX's most complex and ambitious projects is the Super Heavy vehicle, equipped with 33 powerful Raptor engines. The Super Heavy is not just impressive from the outside, but contains a highly intricate system inside, especially the propellant distribution system. The Super Heavy uses cryogenic liquid methane, CH4, and liquid oxygen, O2, as fuel and oxidizer. These are stored in large tanks and are fed to the engines through a series of pipes. 
What's unique about Super Heavy is its liquid oxygen landing tank, a smaller tank used specifically for landing. This tank is connected only to the center 13 engines, reducing issues like propellant sloshing in the larger main tank. At the very bottom of the Super Heavy lies the aft dome, which features 66 feed holes to supply the fuel and oxidizer to the engines. The engines are arranged in a 2010-3 pattern, with the fuel and oxidizer being fed to them through these holes. The system also includes a complex manifold and pipes arrangement that ensures the efficient distribution of the liquid methane and liquid oxygen to the engines. A significant part of the system is the thrust puck, a flat disc that houses mounts for the centered 13 engines. It includes a steel 20-sided structure with gaps for plumbing and adds rigidity to the system. Above this structure is a barrel section with 34 holes arranged in a 20, 10, 3 plus 1 pattern, essential for distributing liquid methane. A unique aspect of the Super Heavy is its fill and drain pipe, which runs directly from the quick disconnect panel into the liquid methane manifold, allowing fuel to fill the booster from the bottom up. This ingenious design positions the manifold directly above the center three Raptor engines, eliminating the need for extra plumbing connections for these engines. The liquid methane distribution includes 10 pipes for the inner 10 Raptors and 20 pipes for the outer 20 engines, extending outwards from the manifold and dome, respectively. This complex network of pipes is critical for fuel distribution to the engines. Another crucial component is the liquid oxygen feed for the 13 engines. These include Y-shaped connections and split feed pipes, which enable the switching between the main tank and the landing tank for the liquid oxygen supply. This design is vital for ensuring efficient fuel use during different phases of the flight. The liquid methane downcomer, or transfer tube, is another essential part of the system. It connects the liquid methane tank at the top of the booster to the fuel distribution system and sits inside the common dome. This downcomer had to undergo design modifications after an implosion during a test, illustrating the challenges and complexities of rocket engineering. Furthermore, the system includes approximately 79 primary propellant flow valves in the aft section of Super Heavy. These valves, necessary for controlling the flow of propellants, must operate under both cryogenic and ambient conditions, showcasing the engineering prowess of SpaceX. Booster 10 recently underwent a test. This test was expected to be a static fire test, a procedure where the rocket's engines are fired without the rocket leaving the ground to check their performance. However, during this test of Booster 10, something unexpected happened. Before the loading of liquid oxygen, LOX, which is a crucial fuel component, could be completed, issues arose. This led to an unusual conclusion to the test. In a typical test, after the static fire, the methane, CH4, and most of the LOX are drained back to storage tanks. This draining uses gravity and is a controlled process. But in this instance, something unusual occurred with the detanking process. This time, all of the LOX was drained out of the side of the launch mount rather than being recovered in the usual manner. This indicates that there was a problem which prevented the normal recovery process of the LOX. While there are many possible reasons for this anomaly, speculating without solid evidence wouldn't be accurate. However, it's worth noting that SpaceX had recently upgraded several components related to the LOX system, including pumps, subcoolers, valves, and plumbing. This might have had some connection to the issue experienced. SpaceX often remains quiet on issues related to ground support equipment, GSE, that happen during ground testing. They tend to keep the specifics of such events private, focusing instead on resolving the issues internally.